We are in lesson 17 of uh, Community Bible Study International Curriculum, uh, the book of Revelation. So all things new. Day one, we gave you the homework to study Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 4, the new creation. So how John describes the new creation. Then 5 to 8, the divine declaration, what declaration Lord gives, the promise and the word. Then it talks about the bride. Already we saw the bride in the earlier chapter also. Then a spectacular view of the city, 21, 15 to 21. Then light and glory. So the new heaven and the new earth. So the revelation itself is a new beginning. The Lord Jesus is the Lord of the churches. That's what we saw, Revelation 1, 1 to 3, 22. The Lord Jesus Christ is the lion over all nations. No nation is except. Revelation 4, 1 to 2015. And the lamb among believers. That is 22, 1 to 22, 21. So lesson 17 and 18. So we see the many aspects of Lord Jesus Christ, being Lord of the churches, lion over the nation, and lamb among the believers. So the new heavens, so when Paul John writes, he senses a fresh beginning. With sweet breath of heaven, he writes this. The idea of new heaven, new earth, is spoken in several passages. Isaiah, Sam, Second Peter. So the new heaven and new earth is an aspiration, is a desire, is a vision of Old Testament saints as well as the New Testament saints as Peter writes. In Bible heavens is referred to three aspects. So when you talk about heavens, so there are three, we can say three layers. The first is the atmosphere, the blue sky. That is the first human aspect of heaven that sustains the earth and humanity. The space or the night sky. After the atmosphere, there is a huge space. Recently, some of the people had a tour to the space. They came around and said they had a lot of great experiences and they want to make it as a space tour. So that is the space. The third, is the dwelling place of God. So when, it, when the Bible talks about heavens, so it may refer to any one of those three. So according to the context, we have to understand. So new heaven here means new blue sky and the night sky. So this is the change. The word new means fresh, recent, and better. So the old will pass away, the new will come. Lord Jesus Christ said, the heaven and the earth shall pass away, but his word would live forever. So that means Lord Jesus Christ affirmed the prophecy that the old earth and old heaven should pass away. That means the atmosphere, everything has to be renewed. God had promised new heaven and new earth by, through prophet Isaiah in 65, 17. So in Bible, create means to create out of nothing. Where will the new heaven and new earth will come from? So there is no raw material. So God creates everything out of nothing. That's what we read in Genesis chapter 1. So there is no first principle or a first uh, cell of life. So God created everything. So some people think that is evolved from one to many. But... The Bible clearly says, God created everything out of nothing. And another important feature in the new heaven and the earth, especially the earth, the new, the sea will not be there. So that is interesting. So when we say the new, it means the history of human time is over. The enter eternity begins. Because time was designed for human beings. Sun, moon, stars, for knowing the times and seasons. 
God created them. So in God's concept, thousand years is like a one day. One day is like thousand years. So God is eternal and he is not bound by time. He is beyond time. So when the human time will be over at a certain point of time and we will be part of the eternity. So there we will not have calendars or clocks that will not be needed. And in the earth, there was no more sea. During the millennial time, there will be water, but there will not be sea. So what will happen to sea, we don't know. So the new way of seeing things, because the sea dis divided the human humanity. So there are many continents because of that. So all these water will disappear. In the Jewish worldview, sea was a place of separation and evil. It was a place or the, it divided humanity. Then it was also a place of evil. So only Revelation 13, 1 and 20, 13, we see the sea is the source of satanic beast and the place of death. So sea was always considered evil in the Jewish worldview. Sea is also referred to wicked and opponents of the law. Isaiah 57, 20, Psalm 89, 9. So the sea will disappear. Then there will be New Jerusalem. This is New Jerusalem, the city of hope. That is above and where believers have citizenship. So this is a very, very special city. So if you want to have the glimpse of heaven, and this chapter offers us the glimpse of heaven. So this is New Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem is in the, in the earthly city, where David reigned, where the temple of God was built, where Lord Jesus Christ was uh, crucified, and he rose again and appeared to disciples, where the church began on the day of Pentecost. All happened in old Jerusalem, that is the earthly Jerusalem. Then we are going to see the new Jerusalem. So we are moving forward to the eternal city. So why this is very, very important? Why this new city is important? The history of humanity begins in the Garden of Eden. So Adam and Eve were placed in a garden. But the eternity will be in a city. So heaven will be a city. So some people want to think heaven like a rural place with streams flowing, with the mountains in the background and all those ideas. But Bible is very clear. Heaven is a city. So if you don't like city, we have to like city because our eternity will be spent in the city of New Jerusalem. So it is eternal city and uh, patriarchs, people of faith, Embrace the city for us. So we'll be seeing that also in in little while, how the patriarchs viewed the city. The father of faith, Abraham, had a vision that embraced eternity. So in the Hebrew, he says, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundation, whose designer and builder is God. Hebrews chapter 11 talks about the heroes of faith. And Abraham had a vision. So he had a vision of the eternal city. And the city, he describes the foundation, the design and the builder is God himself. It is not built by human material or human design or human effort. So they were looking forward to that city. So they consider themselves as strangers and exiles on the earth. If you read Hebrews 11, 13, they all consider that it is, earth is not a permanent place. Earth, we are temporary immigrants or migrants. So we are looking forward to the new city. So here we are on pilgrimage. We are sojourners. We are strangers. We are exiles. And we don't have any possession here. Our eternal possession is in the city that is designed by God himself. 
So that is the pilgrimage, pilgrim principle. So all the people of God, they had practiced the pilgrim principle. So if you look at the Hebrews 11, it also says, Abraham and others, they were living in tents. They did not even build a house for themselves. They chose to live in tents because they were looking forward to the eternal city. Later, other Jewish people, they built their homes, but the patriarchs, they lived in tents as strangers and exiles, and they embraced the vision. So this is the vision that we should also have regarding our future. So the mega project in Abraham's vision, it says the plan design and the implementation was done by God himself. Apostle John in his vision, heavenly city provides a vivid picture of the eternal city. So John was overwhelmed by magnificence. He can only give description as allowed by human vocabulary. So it is cannot be described. It is beyond description. So even uh, Paul had an experience when he said he heard what only angels or only heavenly beings can speak. So he was not supposed to speak as human being. He cannot write it also. In the same way, John also had an experience that he could not describe in human words. So within the new limited human finite language, he tries to explain. So it is only interpretation of the glimpses of the grandeur of the city. So it is beyond our imagination and uh, comprehension. So the foundation, this is interesting. It has all kinds of precious stones. So the precious stones, we don't believe that these precious stones have any, uh, like as many people who are superstitious believe that if we have a, this precious stone in our ring or in the pendant, we will have this kind of blessing. That we don't believe. But some of the uh, general understanding of these stones represent certain things. Jasper, comfort and security. Sapphire, the Ten Commandments, are believed to be engraved in this stone, called the Stones of this Death. So then again, benevolence and generosity, emerald, symbol of rebirth, onyx, protection from evil and physical healing, chameleon, creativity and motivation, chrysolite, self-esteem and self-confidence, burial, spiritual communication, topaz, and forgiveness, chrysoprase, love and prosperity, jacinth, wealth, honor and wisdom, and amethyst, healing, immune system and creativity. So these are the general understanding of the secular world. So all the blessings, all the human understanding of blessings, safety, security, protection, wealth, everything is seen there. So the New Jerusalem City Foundation displays the creativity, wisdom, protection, security, healing, wealth, prosperity, truth, forgiveness, spirituality, and affirmation of God towards his people. So the foundation is precious. Foundation is of the precious stones. So if you see the world, how they are crazy about it. If you have seen the newspaper, 23-year-old old rapper, musician. So what he did is he has made gold hats. So he went through a surgery where these hooks are permanently embedded in his car. So then the other person has put $24 million worth, US dollar worth of diamond in his forehead. So they asked him, why you have it in forehead? Why can't you have it as a ring? He said, somebody can steal the ring, but they cannot steal what is in my forehead. So this is how the people are crazy. But in heaven, there's something is different. 
So he is have all those precious stones as a foundation. So the earthly values and the heavenly values are diametrically opposite. 